Hi, I'm Joyce Swam, Director for the Pamlico County Chamber of Commerce down here in Oriental, North Carolina. And to, we are out visiting our chamber member businesses and local stores and shops. And today I am with bald-headed Bobby God Service, Bobby Brewer. He's going to be talking about some really great things concerning fishing. And you're going to want to come and book a trip with Bobby. So we're going to get started with our interview with Bobby. And I want to ask him a few questions. So, Bobby, tell us what kind of services does Bald Headed Bobby Guide Service offer? All right, so Bald Headed Bobby's Guide Service, we're, we're primarily a fishing charter company. Uh, we fish the waters here in the Oriental area, the, the Noose River, the Pamlico Sound, Bay Rivers, Pamlico Rivers, Trent Rivers up toward New Bern, mm -hmm. uh, down, to, uh, down to the coast uh, in Moorhead City. And then also what we do, we also take destination trips. We just got back, in fact, this past weekend, I just got back from the Tennessee mountains where we did some trout fishing up in the Tennessee mountains. And then in February, we're heading down to, uh, we're heading down to Florida to do some fishing down there, taking a group down there. And then I'm working on a trip right now uh, in the Caribbean that we'll offer in 2018, 2019. Oh, that sounds like fun to me. So <laughs> where, what kind of fish do you specialize in catching? I see here on your, on your uh, board, you've got uh, different things. Can you tell us about some of these fish that you yeah, specialize yeah. in? And yeah, so absolutely. So right now, we have, we have, we have it, during the, most of the year, we have speckled trout, uh, we have redfish, we have some flounder, flounder more, full, more so in the summertime than the wintertime, and striped, striped bass. And we fish for those pretty much primarily all year long. And then we have some seasonal fish. In the summertime, the tarpon start arriving at the end of June, first part of July, and they'll be here July and, and, and August. And then the giant redfish, uh, the bull drum will arrive in August and September to do their spawning. And these are the big 40 and 50 inch redfish. Um, and then in, in October, November, down at the coast, we'll fish for false albacore. Uh, that's primarily with a spinning rod and a fly rod, and I do both, both spinning and fly. And then in uh, May and June down at the coast, we'll fish for cobia. They'll be coming in. And then in the spring and the fall down at the coast, we'll, we'll uh, fish for false albacore. Or I'm sorry, for a Spanish mackerel. So here in eastern North Carolina, we do what they call catch and release. Correct. Can you tell us a little bit about catch and release and if you practice that and sure, sure. what so that what, means? Basically what catch and release is is exactly what it says. You catch the fish, you release the fish. Um, most, some of the fish, or you cannot keep it off, such as a tarpon and some, and some of the big bull drum that come in here and spawn. We can't keep those at all. There's other fish that we can keep, such as the striped bass when they're in season, the redfish, the, the slot redfish, the flounders, the, the speckled trout. So they all, have, they all have krill sizes, which means the number of fish you can catch, and also they have length that they've got to fall within for, before you can catch them. So if a customer wants to keep the fish and it's within the, the length, within the krill limit, we'll keep them. If they don't, then, it's, then we'll do catch and release just so that we can keep a uh, little, little fish uh, conservancy here. Okay. For conservation here. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. And does somebody have to be an experienced fisherman to book a trip with no, bald-headed no, Bobby no, Guide Service? Not at all. I mean, I'll take experienced fishermen out to the first-time fishermen. In fact, some of the fun trips that I have is when I take kids. Yeah. It's the first first time they've ever caught a fish. I mean, we had we had a group of Boy Scouts down here from Pennsylvania a couple of years ago, and this 12 year old boy, 15 or 13 year old boy, something like that, had never caught a fish before. And so he catches just a little pin fish, and he was going crazy. And then <laughs> probably 30 minutes later, he catches a red fish that he ate, that he ate for dinner that night, Aww. and he was going absolute nuts. And that that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun when we when we take the the new fishermen to make a memory for themselves. Oh yeah, that sounds great. I think um, so. How about fishing license? Do they need, does the person contacting you already have to have one? Yeah. And can you help them with that? Or? Yeah, so the fishing license here, here in this area, in the Oriental, you know, Pamlico County area, we have three different bodies of water. Mm -hmm. We have the coastal water, mm -hmm. we have the joint water, and we have the inland waters. And so I have a blanket, I have a blanket license for my boat and anybody fishing on my boat if we fish in the coastal waters, mm -hmm. which is off the coast and the joint waters, which are some of the creeks in this particular area. Once we start getting further up river to the other, other uh, to Newburn and, and, and other parts, then that's more inland waters, and they don't offer um, blanket license. So at that point, the uh, fisherman needs to get a license. And so what we'll do is when a guy calls or a person calls me and we book the trip, we'll talk about what we're gonna catch, where we're gonna fish, and then at that point, I'll tell him mm -hmm. that you may need to get a, a three-day pass or a three-day license 
for inland because we're because of that fish we're going to be fishing on some of the inland waters but all that gets covered when we book the trip so they know what they need to do right and you can tell them exactly where to go to get that and absolutely. how much it's going to cost them so that they'll understand what they're absolutely so you can buy it anywhere local here or you can buy them north Carolina has it where you can buy them online so they okay. can just buy it online they don't have to print it off they can just keep it on their phone and then they can use it that way okay what does somebody need to know about the guide service before booking a trip? Is there anything that they should be aware of? Yeah, I mean, what, what my boat is a 22-foot bay boat. And so from that boat, I can fish three people comfortably mm -hmm. on the spinning, and I'll fish two people comfortably on flies, doing fly fishing. So, from, so basically what I try to do is understand how many people are coming. Some people want to get greater than three people on the boat. Mm -hmm. When that occurs, we, I'll bring in another guide because I have relationships with a lot of guys around here and we help each other, we help each other. Yeah, out. that's great. But when they get on the boat, really all they gotta do, once they step on the boat, I've got water, I've got snacks, and all they have to do is um, dress for the weather, whether it's cold, whether the sun's out, mm -hmm. sunscreen, hat, sunglasses, that's really all that, that's really all they've got to do. Do you uh, take group bookings? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what I'll do is, like I said, I can take three people on my boat. Mm -hmm. um, we will take, I mean, I've been part of groups of 10 or 15 fishermen. So at that point, what I'll do, I'll take three and I'll start calling my buddies and then we'll put the whole trip together for them like that. In addition to the, to the guides we, we work with, we work with a lot of the, um, a lot of, a lot of the area real mm -hmm. estate agents and we work with just like River New Suite and some of the other places like that and, and, and the, the marina, various places. So when somebody calls and they say, I want to come down, we can take care of not only the fishing, but we can take care of the accommodations mm -hmm. and they can book all That's that great. through us or we can tell them, go to this particular real estate agent or go to this particular hotel and they can put the whole trip together. Well, that's great. Yeah. That sounds like a whole lot of fun to me. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been doing yeah. this, Bobby? Huh? Yeah, so I started fishing when I could barely walk, probably. <laughs> I mean, I, I was fortunate my dad was an outdoorsman. I had a lot of cousins and uncles that were outdoorsmen. And I started fishing on my grandmother's pond. So I was one of those kids that sat beside his mm -hmm. dad. His dad told you to be quiet or the fish wouldn't bite, you know, because I probably talked all the time. And so I just fished all my life. And so what I, I'm, I'm, uh, we've got a place down here in Oriental 12 years ago, I think my wife and I did. So at that point I started focusing on the Oriental, you know, the, the region mm -hmm. around this particular area. Yeah. So, so 12 years down in this particular area. That's, yeah, you've been here a while. You've been doing, you've been doing this a while. Yes. Okay, so that's, that's, that's good. What would you tell your potential clients yeah. about choosing bald-headed Bobby's guide <laughs> service. You know, one of the things, since I've been fishing so long, and, and I've caught a lot of great fish in, in where I've gone out with guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, before, before I started chartering, I would charter guys myself. And so I understand the amount, the monies they have to give us and, and how hard sometimes that money is to earn. And also, I've, I've been on guided trips to where we caught tons of fish, and I've been on guided trips where we caught zero fish. And I understand the disappointment mm -hmm. when you don't catch a lot of fish. And so. My goal is when they get off the boat is for them to have smiles on their face and have a memory that, you know, yeah. in some cases they'll come down, they'll catch a bucket lit fish like a tarpon or an old drum that they, you know, that we've got the state record, the state record for the old drum, the big giant redfish is in North Carolina. So wow. we have the biggest redfish in the world or in the United States here in, in North Carolina. So I, I want them to go away happy. I want them to go away with a great experience. And that's, 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 you can't ask for anything better than that. You really can't. So tell people how they can find you. Okay. What is your physical address and give them some information. Yeah, so I'm physically located in Old Hills, 502 Hodge Street. I mean, I'm, in, I'm upstairs in, in uh, suite number 10, so that's my physical address. Uh, but hopefully I'm not here a whole lot because I'm out fishing. And then my website is baldheadedbobby.com, so www.baldheadedbobby.com. Find me on Facebook, Bobby Brewer, and then I have a, uh, I have a, a group, uh, baldheadedbobby.com or, or uh, have a group bald headed body guide service. Uh, phone number is 919-349-6112. Uh, I don't do Twitter, um, but you know, also they can, you know, they, people see me on the television. I've done TV shows, I've been fortunate enough to be on NBC Sports, on uh, World Fishing Network, been featured in some fishing magazines. Um, so just, just go to the internet and, and put in uh, Oreo Fishing Guide, uh, or Area City Around Here Fishing Guide, or Bald Headed Bobby, and I'll pop up. Well, if you want to catch a big fish, this is the man to come and see. So thanks so much, Bobby, for the interview today and tight lines. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>